I caught her mid-drink. It is time for another episode of The Cultural Hall. If you are new to The Cultural Hall, we do uh, several episodes all the time, lots of different things. Uh, most of the time, you can count on once a week some sort of news episode where we try and talk about as much news as we can. We rarely deliver on like a, a, like a Thanksgiving heaping helping of news. We usually hit about, I don't know, six, seven, eight stories and we sort of say, oh, this is how this is impacting me or not impacting me. Uh, mm -hmm. I, who's me? I'm Richie. Uh, I started this thing uh, with another lady who's no longer around about 12 years ago. But a lady who is around is my friend from college. I call her Chow. But if you're if you're watching this over on the YouTube at the Cultural Hall channel, you'll see that it's Charmaine. Don't try oh. and figure it out. Just know that it's Chow. I'm going to fix it. There. Thank you. Thank you. Chow well. is uh, an attorney. She's uh, a dancer, yeah. a mother, uh, yeah. a saint. Yep. I don't know. What else? Do you ever do you ever do that where you when people ask you for a bio and you're like, I don't know what uh, this I do this? Yeah, I I start listing a bunch of stuff and then they say, oh, that's too much. <laughs> You're a lot. And I'm like, thanks. Yeah, Maybe thank you. you asked for it. So yeah. uh, I, I just introduced myself as a lot. No, and I always think it's funny, too, when people will be like, yeah, uh, yeah, here are some things. And then they're like. Oh, you're a, a mother, and you're, and then people are like, "I'm more than a mother," and it's like, no, I wasn't saying yeah. that you're only. I, you, right. you told me I was commenting on the thing that you said to me you and said engaging yeah. the. I yeah, know we aren't singular things. People are not right. singular things. Nope, nope. I mostly get how do you do all those things that you do, and I'm like, I don't know. I just don't really think about it. I just, you know, keep going. I don't get overwhelmed. I just you go. stop them and go, listen, I don't have time to explain this to you. I've got five kids that I got to care for. So can, yeah. can we get after this? Yep. We just, we're here. We're going to have a good time. So uh, kids are in school. Summer was great. We haven't chatted for a little bit. Is there anything new and or exciting that we need to know about you? Um, no, we still, <laughs> still have five kids. Um, they're all in school. I did just come back from Utah um we did, did you make the general conference pilgrimage as it were we did my it was so it was a trip with just me my oldest and my youngest and we stayed with my mother-in-law in mapleton and then i took my oldest to general conference for the first time very cool uh, we were i think we were in the 14th row from the well book. we were front and center and yeah, Donnie Osmond was about four rows in front of us. So that's brother Osmond in this context. True. Or brother Donnie. True. He's a Sunday school teacher, so he's not a president. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, um, Mr. Mr. Osmond, since he's a teacher, I guess Sunday yeah. school makes him still yeah. better. And I, I shook hands with Governor Levitt, super awkward. Like I was walking to my seat and I saw him, recognized him. And like, it's one of those things you don't really think about what you're doing. And I stuck my hand out and I said, Governor Levitt, so good to see you. I know you're not the governor anymore, but you were the governor when I was a kid. You'll always be the governor to me. <laughs> and I was like, oh, hi. And I was like, okay, I'm going to leave now. This is weird. I made this weird. Yeah. yeah. So, He's like, I got, I've got the choir to look after. Yeah. I appreciate this <laughs> awkwardness. Can yeah. I, are we done? Have we fulfilled yeah. it? Yeah. Can we go? Yeah. So we went and found our seats and um, she loved it. She's 11. She's mm -hmm. about 12. That's a big deal for an 11 year old. Oh. Something like that. Yeah. She, she enjoyed it. Um, so we, the, the thing I think that surprised her the most was honestly the protesters. She was, oh. she had not experienced that before and they were very yelly protesters. I will sure. say that too. Like very, you're you're going to hell kind of like situation and it was it was funny because the day before she had submitted an essay um about why the usa is great mm -hmm. and it's like some competition where you can win a hundred dollars and she really wants to win this money so she worked really hard on it for hours yeah. and talked about free speech and she was talking about taylor swift honestly <laughs> <laughs> In the context of Taylor Swift can say what she wants to say and have that. But anyways, so we walked by that and I said, well, how do you feel about free speech now? 
And she's like, I don't really like it that much, mom. Like they were <laughs> yelling at me. They yelled at me. And all yeah. I did was like walk into a building and I'm like, yeah. And then after a while she said, I guess I'm glad they have a place for it and that wow. they can express themselves somewhere. So it's okay. And so I was like, very mature. Yeah, I was so, going to say that's pretty mature. I know several adults that are like, nope, take away my free speech so long as I don't have to deal with that. Yeah. 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 I was really surprised, but no, it was a good session. It was the Saturday morning session okay. of conference. So, um, you know, everybody, good energy, everybody's like excited and it's, you haven't been through a session yet. So she was excited and engaged and good talks. Um, so anything in particular from conference overall, I mean, we've already done, uh, the episode that we released earlier this week. If you've not listened to it yet, uh, an episode about all 20 locations of the temples that were announced and uh, some background information, where they are, how long they've been waiting, how long the mission's been open. It's a great episode. Corey does such an amazing job. And I just sit there and go, yeah, and what else? And then he goes, oh, and over here. And I go, and what else? So you should yeah. check that out. But as far as conference goes, anything that you were like, yeah, I'm I'm into this or like a theme or a thing that you went, okay. Um, I loved Elder Dane's talk. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess I'll say two things. One, I really liked Elder Dane's talk. That was Saturday morning session. Put that and in context for people who don't know what Elder Dane's talk is about. Elder Dane's talk was about, you know, the gospel is not a formula. It's, it's a, it's who you're becoming. It's, it's about being wrapped in the love of Jesus. It's not about, you know, getting your merit badge in the gospel. It's standing in the river of the love of God. And just a lot of really great visuals that just made you feel cozy and like, God loved you. And mm. like that's, that's our goal in everything we do at church. And so I really liked that. So that was my first one. And then my second one. So I, if we just studied it in Relief Society from the last general conference, but I didn't like Elder Bednar's talk in April mm -hmm. because the theme of the talk or a part of the talk, he says, well, if you love God, you would keep his commandments. And if you love them, you keep the commandments. And I felt really frustrated. And I expressed this to everybody in Relief Society. I said, yeah, I do. But like, also, I'm a human being. And like, people make me mad on the freeway. And like, I get frustrated. And, yeah, you know, sometimes I don't do like, yes, I try to keep the commandments and do all these things. But I'm also human. And I'm like, people have real issues. And I just felt like there was no room for mistakes and forgiveness. And it was just, it felt very scarlet letter, Hester Prynne, put on your scarlet letter, because if you loved God, you, you wouldn't would, have nope. Yeah, you would um, not you have, have done, done that. that. Nope. So I, I was kind of annoyed with Bednar last April because of that. And his talk, and now I can't even really remember what it's about, but it, it was, it was a different, it kind of had the pendulum swing the other way mm. about just trying your best and um you know that god loves you even when you mess up kind of stuff is what i remember hearing maybe maybe that was just the spirit talking to me because yeah, i was yeah. so against yep. what he had previously said but um yeah no it was those were the two that stood out i mean there were so many good things that's what i'll say too there was i tweeted for the cultural hall is it called tweeted or posting? Yeah. No, I think it's still tweeted because you go to twitter.com and it's and okay. It has the logo, but it's still twitter.com. We're not we're not Xing. Like yeah, I don't no, know. No, oof. No, it sounds weird. So no, the church is. The church is allegedly, but we are not. Yeah. Well, yeah. so I yeah, I tweeted for the cultural hall on the Saturday evening session. And I gotta tell you my proudest tweet. Um, there's a trend right now in social media where people will post because Taylor Swift's everywhere, right? So they'll sure. post people in outfits and colors that represent her different albums. And it makes absolutely no sense. Like most of the time, it's just kind of random. And you're just like, you pick this random celebrity and you're like, this is them dressed up like her debut album. This is their reputation outfit, whatever. So Elder Soros, Soros was talking and I did this poll and I said, I just said, which album is Elder Suarez's tie? Mm -hmm. And I did the options of 1989 or Midnight. 
And I, I tweeted it and I thought, no one's going to get this. Like, nobody is going to vote. Like, this won't make sense because I didn't even reference. I just said, which album is this tie? Uh-huh. And people voted, Richie. Like, they got <laughs> it. Like, it was legit. People voted. And a woman commented and she said, I didn't understand what this tweet was about, but I asked my daughter and without hesitation, she said midnight. <laughs> I, just, I, I just loved it, you know? So... That's Yay. my contribution to conference. Yes, that's awesome. <laughs> uh, that uh, that that's pretty rad. I in the days since general conference, I have thought, and you know, I wonder because a couple of people that that uh, tweeted and a huge thanks to everyone who did, um, not only from the cultural hall but those who interacted with us as well. Is I wonder if Twitter has had its day when we originally started live tweeting. It was a really big deal, and now I I sort of wonder if it's a big deal or not. Um, I'll, I'll tell you. So I sort of dropped in and out of conference. I worked very hard this last weekend, too much actually. And the takeaway from me that because I only dropped in on a few, but like the thing that that I that I that I have been wondering about, and this is not the spiritual side of conference. I'll talk about that uh, later in a different episode when I've had a chance to kind of enjoy some of them. Your but, buildup is killing me, Richie. But, what but is it? Thing, what is it? The age, the age, uh, the age of, and, and this is sort of what I've thought. So let me preface what I'm about to say with, I love the organization of the church. Mm-hmm. I believe that it is literally God inspired and called. Mm-hmm. And I wonder if the idea of being called for your entire life is is the thing, is the jam, is how it should have been Mm -hmm. for several reasons. But the one that that struck me is like, you know, I hear Elder Ballard's talk who's like, listen, I can't see, so we're going to do that. And and by the way, such a great talk and such a different tone and such a different feeling because he wasn't reading. He just was like, you know, this is how I feel and this is what my testimony is, right? But then, yeah. you know, everything about Elder Holland, who is not, you know, doing altogether fantastic, and uh, President Nelson, who, you know, is doing real fantastic, but still not fantastic mm-hmm. at 99 years old. Like, I, 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 I haven't really thought these things out loud, so let me tell you this is what I feel about it. For a long time, I feel like the church was like, it's King James or bust, baby. It's got to be mm-hmm. the King James. And then we were like, you know, maybe understanding is the more important thing. So maybe, you know, these other versions. And now it seems like we're able to kind of go through all that. And I and I wonder if, um, you know, even 50 years ago when it was like apostles get to be like 70, 72, 75 before they pass. I Like, I wonder if like the longevity, first of all, um, the... The slow, I, I don't know. It just seems to me like it, like some of these gentlemen, I wish that they could have the option to be like, this was great. I loved this so much. And also I'm 95. So mm-hmm. let's get a nice spry 80 year old up in here and we'll have, you know, this person take care of it. Cause I don't know. Cause I, I just like, I feel bad. I I mean their messages are great. I love listening to them, but like I I sort of feel um as I, I sort of feel bad like for their families that are like, well, he's just going to keep going cuz he knows that he needs to do it almost like that. If you love me, you'll keep doing this until mm-hmm. you die. And it's like I I just don't, I don't know if if that's the point. If when Jesus said leave your nets and follow me for the rest of your life, I'm not sure that 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 was that that, that's what it was well and i think it's a very like it's a very romantic notion that that is what you do yeah but i will say and i'll be kind of the opposite side of support of it if i i i think it brings out a different perspective for us in the church because we wouldn't have that from president ballard Elder Ballard, whatever. Yeah. I forget who's the president, who's an elder. Everyone essentially, I don't know. That's but yeah, whatever title. Yeah. But we wouldn't have that unique, like, oh, this is a little bit different if everybody was younger. 
And I'd, I'd love, and if anybody listening runs stats on things, does it give the opportunity that we ha now have speakers from other people because their talks are shorter or because Elder Colin didn't speak? Mm. Did, it give, did it open the door for somebody else to speak and maybe maybe more women were able to speak? I don't know. I didn't look at those statistics or maybe, um, and you know, maybe that helps prepare for when they do get that call or when they do step into those shoes because they've had more people are getting a taste of being able to speak because they're, you know, they, they're speaking shorter yeah, or they're not speaking at all. And I'll say this too, this is my last point that we can move on or you can rebut whatever you want to do. Mm. Um, I think I, I get really annoyed with my, and maybe it's just my local congregation in stake. They are so focused on the youth that it is almost smothering. Oh, okay. They're just so, and they say all the time, oh, Relief Society and the Elders Quorum, they worry about everybody else. And the bishop is just going to laser in on these youth. And I feel like, I mean, my own daughter is like, why, like, give me some room. Like, I just want to be a person. And, and I feel just very like under a microscope. So I feel like it's nice to kind of pull some of the attention more in balance of, hey, this isn't just the church of the young, yeah, to the old, it's the church of the everybody. And so they kind of get a voice because oftentimes those are forgotten about. Hmm. So I don't I know. Like that. Yeah. I, have, I have no rebut. <laughs> well, and I will say too, we know that this is, this is also kind of a unique generation, right? This is the boomer generation. And it's going to be different going forward because you have statistically so many in the population in this generation. And as they do, I mean, 10 years from now, we're going to have a very different looking first presidency and quorum of the 12. Yeah. You know, I believe yeah. people are going to live a while. Do I think President Nelson is going to be 110? Probably not. But yeah. Statistically so very unlikely. Yeah. So 10 years from now, it feels like, man, they're still up there, but you know, in 10 years time, it's going to be a whole different perspective of who's there. The few that are still, I mean, Bednar, right. He's yep. there. We're, we're with Bednar for the long haul. So, um, so you better get used to him. You better know. see him chow. I know. Thank, thank heavens. You know, he doesn't just give April talks. He gives October ones. <laughs> Bring me back. Yep. But um, yeah, I just think it's going to be, we're going to see a change and then it won't happen really again because this boomer generation, we just won't, we don't have the width of generational population when you get to people born in the 1970s and 1980s. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, I suppose the thing that I think is, I, I just wish that we could allow people to say it was no, great yes. and I'm going to pass, right? Like let's, yeah. I'm going to pop out. I'd rather, you know, the it, the passing of my wife has been hard and my health has been hard. Mm -hmm. I want to do this. I, and, and I don't want it to be like the missionaries in the 80s and 90s that came home early and we all go, oh, Elder Holland had to step away. I yeah. want it to be how we treat missionaries in the 21st century where it's like, yeah, great. Thanks for yeah. doing it. Thanks for doing it for any amount of time. Yeah. Great job. Yes. Let, you know, someone else is going to step in and they'll do a great job too. And maybe they'll stay till they die or maybe they'll stay till they can't or don't yeah. want to do it anymore. And, but, you know, I, I almost think maybe it's a generational mindset again, because you have this, it's not just a, our church issue, really. Mm -hmm. You have this in Congress, you have this in, you have this in government where people just aren't releasing the reins but it might be generational. I don't know. And I think maybe in the future with us seventies, eighties, nineties born people will be like, okay, listen, it doesn't, it doesn't mean that you don't believe or it doesn't reflect on your faith, but it's okay. You know, we'll be yeah. more accepting of that because of how people were treated when they came home early for missions. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Have those experiences. And so we're, we'll be able to say, let's let's not just you know do this forever until we take our last breath yeah yeah well interesting if you yes. have thoughts about it contact at the cultural hall.com you can certainly weigh in you can yeah. either agree with uh one or none of us or both of us maybe 
uh, contact at the cultural hall.com is the email. I just want to say this. Uh, I didn't know this at the beginning of this year, but this is the year that my body falls apart. If you listened in the last episode oh. of articles of news, I talked about my, uh, my stage two kidney failure. Well, also I had the sweet opportunity to get an R MRI yesterday. You know, what's scary. The first five seconds of an MRI is the most yes. terrifying thing ever. Yes. Yep. Uh, I'll give you the uh, I'll give you the play by play as they're putting me in the tube. For for those that might be wondering, I've got this massively pinched nerve in my neck that makes my fingers numb and like my left arm completely useless. We're getting on it. We're working on it. it takes forever to order an MRI and then to do the MRI. And in a sweet bit bit of irony, as I was driving yesterday morning to go and get the MRI, the long awaited several weeks took to ordered the hospital called me and said hey yeah are you on your way already because we have to update the machine this morning so we're gonna have to do it this afternoon and i just was like what what anyway the first five seconds of the mri went like this okay this is gonna be oh my gosh i am gonna die i can't move from this from the next 35 minutes okay richie calm down the only way that you're gonna start feeling better is if you just lay here so try and take deep breaths try and take deep breaths try and take oh just, you fell asleep? yes but it was it, i'm not being uh exaggerative when i say it went probably in that uh arc of story that quick oh my gosh I feel tied down. I am going to die. Will they let me out? Can they hear me if I scream? Okay, calm down. You'll be just fine. Sleep. <laughs> Your poor butt. You know how people like their nervous system gets overloaded so they faint or something? Like that mm -hmm. was funny. Like, I'm just going to put you to sleep. We're shutting down. We're just going to. I hadn't considered <laughs> that. I 100% believe that that's what it was. It's like, here's how we'll do this. Click. Yeah, like uh, I'm just going to shut you down because yep. you've got too much. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So when do you find out the results? Did oh, they I don't know. They gave me a CV in case I have to go see a doctor. And then they sent it to my doctor who I sent a message to last night that said, did this, what's next? And now what happens? Now what do we do? <laughs> can, can Still hurts. Yeah. Yep. How many times do I dip in the River Jordan? Please yeah. give an instruction. Seriously. It's the worst. Uh, let's, uh, right. let's, let's take a break. When we come back, we'll do as much news as humanly possible i don't know what that means we'll come back and do that in the second block of the cultural hall here in the seven second half seventh half oh, geez. <laughs> yeah it's a lot a lot of abs i don't think that's how apps work it's uh the time that we do actual articles of news peter brian Holt, play that song for me and away we go. So I posted, there's a, a Facebook group, if you like this kind of thing. It's called the Cultural Hall Back Row. It's free to be a part of. It's not like our Patreon page where you have to pay as little as $5 a month to be a part of. And there's a group of those folks hanging out in a Facebook group. Think about joining that, by the way, patreon.com forward slash the Cultural Hall. But the Cultural Hall Back Row is a group of, I just checked, 316 people, listeners of the Cultural Hall who uh, we chat about stuff. Sometimes there will be tangential things like someone may post in there about the MRI that I took and say, yeah, I had an MRI once and uh, whatever. Go right off on a tangent and talk about it. So I posted about, hey, you know, what What are we thinking? What What do we like about the hall? What should we be doing different? Are we missing? Do I have a blind spot? All that, just sort of some feedback. And uh, I, I want to address... Um, I want to address one of the uh, messages because I I love it. So, uh, Valine Terry says, love the interviewing style. The more episodes, the better. My only suggestion would be for the outro on the news episodes. When you, uh, she says, you need to retire trying to sync up the of the cultural hall with the co-hosts. It's painful. Nobody can sync with you as well as brother Kyle did, which is sad. Aww. Yes. She said, you should just close it up on your own. Keep up the great work. A and, and I was like, uh, Valine, I don't, I don't think that you get it. What we're, what we do there. And then Josh goes, who's the next commenter. He says, I enjoy the outro, the worse, the better. And that's my feeling with it. 
my feeling because we uh, most oftentimes we'll do these over zoom and the syncing of people saying stuff together at the same time is impossible and so yeah. i absolutely love so valine let me know if that perspective on the outro changes things for you it's not trying to actually be on because that is a fool's errand it is what kind of disaster can we get ourselves into at the end of every episode yeah, that's funny. So I always, whenever I do it, I get tripped up because my kids add in different, like we get in ruts where when we say a prayer, we all of a sudden, like every time we're like, and bless that it rains. And now that's like part of our regular. So, you know, you always say, what is it? Oh, this, in our body. Has nourishment strength yeah. in your body? If you're not Go healthy enough to listen this week. Yep. Yeah. Listen to, yeah. And then, so when we've done it before, I want to say like some of those weird things, my kids pop into prayers, like, and bless us with rain because we're in a drought or mm -hmm. bless Donna who is sick because my kids will pray for these things for like a month. And it's just like the standard it's, it's the same as like saying amen or something. They just throw this in. And so when we do that, I'm like, wait, which autopilot am I on? <laughs> so it, yeah. I, I want you to know that this is a safe place that if you want to ask for blessings of rain to to wipe out the drought, it's safe here. Yeah, it just makes me glitch. So I'm like, oh, yep. that's fun. It's fun. So. So thank you for everyone who's a part of the cultural hall back row. You do have to ask to join that, but that's just then a click from us once we let you yeah. in. Patreon is the one that you need to pay to be a part of. I sent you a bunch of stories. In fact, you didn't quite realize how many I sent you. Uh, oh. I, I want to address this first one because this happened a couple of weeks ago and we hadn't yet a uh, missionary, a uh, sister missionary, uh, Taylor Aaron Ma, 20 years old, passed away. She's from Washington, uh, passed away in the hospital in the Philippines from an undetermined medical illness. Um, the church, the standard message, the love for the family and the mission and all of those things. And and mm -hmm. I I haven't heard anything more about it. No, I actually just looked this up for my mom. My mom wanted to know. She asked me for an update. And so I Googled because. And? Bless my mom's heart. I'm like, you know, you could Google this. Yeah. But, no, but you do, uh, no you update. do it so well. You do it so well. No, I'm just so good at it. No, no update. So I checked as of Sunday. I And I didn't go into like the deep, let me, you know, stalk people on Facebook or see every post that's ever happened. I didn't, I didn't go that deep. Mm -hmm. But no update still. So. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, yeah, I can't imagine. I mean, you likely with the amount of kids, the, your statistics that one of your kids will go serve mm -hmm. a mission is mm -hmm. pretty significant. Uh, yeah, fair. Yeah, Oldest so said I, she wants to serve, so that's fair. Yeah, yeah. I I can't uh, I can't imagine what that would be like to be like, hey, good luck, and then that's it. Yeah, it's you know I don't know, and I never on my mission we did not have a missionary that passed. Yeah, or even that were critically injured. So I I think that's I don't know that's that's very difficult but i hope that family has peace sure i hope there's beautiful angelic ministering you know what i mean like that yeah. that kind of comfort coming to that family so, and i and i think about it you know in conference it was reported seventy thousand. That, that we certainly don't hear about that many that pass certainly everyone that does pass is a you know tragedy and gone too soon and and all, all the things so i'm not playing downplaying that but i mean you think on a year we hear maybe a dozen of 70,000. Yeah. 20 somethings, early 20 somethings. Mm -hmm. you know, and the, I think the church is better at letting us know when this happens. Sure. When I served my mission in 2005, I feel like it was very much, oh, missionaries don't die. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're all on, we're all on planet earth subject to the, you know, natural laws of the universe. Yeah god yeah so you know it's it's gonna happen so and, and and then i guess worth the conversation that if if you know that family or a family of anyone whose missionary dies the thing not to say is well you knew that they died doing what they wanted to serving the lord what a great way because that that family that person is grieving yeah. the loss of a person that they never get to see again not yeah. to say that you know that sentiment that sentiment may not be true but man, 
we are so sorry that that loss. Yeah. Yeah. Don't don't say that there's one of the stripling warriors is waiting for like I hate that. I mean, and it's a loss. It's a loss of conversation. It is an empty seat at that Thanksgiving table, that Christmas morning. You know, it's mm -hmm. a loss. Mm -hmm. And so it's when people say like, well, good thing you're an eternal family. Yeah. Like suddenly you don't have a lot. I'm like, you still have a loss. Eternity is yeah. great, but yeah. I have a loss for Thanksgiving 2023. Yeah. She would have been just fresh home from her mission or whatever it was, you know? Mm. So mm. Heartbreaking. Uh, I sent you a bunch of stories. Do you have a, a place you would like to take us next? Um, let me see. I really enjoyed, so actually the hymn book one, let's talk okay. about the, okay. Uh, it's going to be huge. It's yeah, man. Now I sound like I'm a presidential candidate. It's going to be bigly. It's going to be, be huge. Book. 450 to 500 song. I can't do accents. No, let's, you nailed it though. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, so it's going to be big, but here's where I don't like this story. I really feel like I had to search to find the date for when is this coming out? Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, by 2030, it's going to be in 50 languages. And then you have to kind of sneak into the sentence behind it to know English, Spanish, Portuguese, and French end of 2026. And then I think, well, now this is like, I don't even know how I feel about this because I got all excited. Oh yeah, the hymn book's coming. And I'm like, 2026, that's about three years away from now. So, sure. but I, but as I understand it, and I don't think it's listed in this, they'll start rolling out um, like parts of it. And I don't know how that works necessarily Good. in 2024. So Good. we're knocking It'll... on the door of, and I would bet we probably get it English first, right? I'm betting yeah. we're saying 2026 because we'll roll English first. Yep. Spanish second, Portuguese or Portuguese third, yeah. and then we'll get to the other ones. But maybe that's why the 2026 date is, listen, we'll get all three of them by then. So it'll be like, you know, we'll get the single release or the EP <laughs> or something. Hymns for home at church and church. Here's the EP. Here's yeah. The single. yeah. That's, that's not nice. a bad, that's not a bad idea. It. No. That's not a bad idea. Yeah. It works for music artists. So, you know. Yeah, interesting, interesting. And and I would think probably, too, if they uh, roll it out in the way that, like, in my mind that I think they would, you'll mm -hmm. still have the old hymn book app, and then you'll have the new one, and maybe they'll just be like, okay, we're ready for, you know, some more of this. Uh, we talked about this on a previous episode, but they've got, like, musicians and artists who are giving, um, you know, their performances, being paid for their performances that we'll be able to listen to. What is hymn number 423? I've never heard that song before. How does that sound? Oh, here's, you know, Janice here's, Pat Perry. I was going to say Nate Pacheco in a yeah. field in Morgan, Utah. <laughs> Here is the piano guys, instrumental yeah. version of hymn number 427. Yep. yep. I well, hope there is some good. of that. Well, and this is kind of a side story, but um, you said that, that the hymn app, the sacred music app is going to be there. Mm -hmm. but is it because we're switching over to gospel streaming the saints channel is going away well and we're moving over to gospel streaming so sure i'm curious if it will still be there uh and i love this let's go to that story so there for a long time i think that it's been sort of splintered within the church right there's they had mm -hmm. the moroni channel even you know in the last 20 years which mm -hmm. uh for people here locally like it was an over the air terrestrial radio station that you could listen to the moroni channel i can't remember what the thing was and then yeah. when, as apps came on people could kind of be a part of that but then you had the um you know you have the youtube where you can see this and you have this where you can see that and now they've said listen all of those things we're going to combine them into one and you can stream church things but i don't think that's what this is i mean that might be the performances of these particular things but I think still within the gospel library, because it will be a book of our hymns for the church okay. sort of curriculum, I think that it will still be in that place. But maybe any performances will be shared in the gospel um, streaming app. Well, if there's any IT people that listen to this for the church, can I just say, can we keep gospel kids, gospel kids? But, I mean, I understand. Let's put it all into one on gospel streaming, right? Sure, sure. 
sometimes I give my kids my phone and say, go to the gospel kids app. And then they're just in gospel kids. I don't need them to go into gospel streaming and accidentally stumble upon a talk about pornography or, you know, here's Kimball's talk about homosexuality from the seventies. My kids are like, what? <laughs> I don't know what happened. I was coloring Nephi and all of a sudden I'm like, <laughs> what's this? So, and I say, so my daughter, sorry, this is now a side story real yes, quick. Please take it. I took my 11 year old. So she's in young women's. Mm-hmm. We went to the back to school fireside that my ward did. Okay. And essentially they do it every year. Hey, we're going back to school. Yes. Here's a person speaking. Yeah. Great Here's year. a little inspiration wait. to help you through the year. And I, so she turned 11 in December. So she's a very young, she's like the youngest you can be in young women's because, you know, she turned 11 December 19th, 12 days later, it's the year she's going to turn 12. And so now she's in young women's like yep. you couldn't get younger. So we haven't really done activities. We haven't really jumped in headlong to a lot of the youth stuff because I just feel weirded out that she's hanging out with 17 year old boys. And I'm just like, I don't, she's too young for, too old for primary, but I'm not ready for all this stuff. So we did the back to school fireside and we get there and we're sitting through it. And at one point they're having kids yell out answers. And of course the 17 year old boy in front of me sitting in front of us said something like a woman with loose morals like trying to be funny Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and like everybody else is like whatever but my daughter's like what does that mean Mm. a woman with loose morals I'm like oh well (laughs) you know at least he didn't say the word slut but I was also like I don't want to have this conversation with my daughter right now like you know, and it, try to explain why a 17 year old would yell that out in a yeah. spiritual setting. You know what I mean? Sure. I was sure I was a little cheesed by that. But anyway, so I hope they keep the gospel kids app, the gospel kids app. So we don't wander into stuff that I'm then having to explain. Well, and I think that that uh, when we when I posted this, uh, because I think the article said something like uh, a, a now safe way of being able to do this, I sort of was being glib. And I was like, was there an unsafe way to visit yeah. the gospel thing? And what a couple of people pointed out to me is that uh, you just give sort of random um, search to a kid, you know, hey, look up the church thing, even if they're just, you know, browsing the Internet. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, be able to find any number of things way mm-hmm. worse than a woman with loose morals shouted by a 17 year old. And so that person's uh, contention was, yeah, we're going to put it in an app so you don't have to go anywhere else to even have the chance of that. And I think just that one step further when you talk about the gospel kids. But yeah, I, I, I can't imagine that they wouldn't have easy access or continue to have easy access to yeah. like, you have a young person, click here, and then all that. Age appropriate yeah. access. Yeah. yeah. Right. Like I don't love it on Netflix that my kids end up look they're looking for some kid spooky show and they end mm-hmm. up finding like these horror movies and they're yeah. like, what? And it's they don't even click on it, but they just see the picture, you know, when they search and they're like, ah. Yeah. So Disney Plus is a little bit better, but you sure. can still find content in there that's not appropriate for a nine-year-old, eight-year-old, seven-year-old to watch. But Amazon Prime does pretty good to say, okay how old is the age range of this person? And then mm. they can really access that. All right. Sorry. Now this turned into an ad for streaming. No, no, listen. And, uh, uh, you know, the living scriptures, the living, uh, living, what? Yes. Love wow. the living scriptures app. We have that. We pay for that. I pay for it for my stepmom up in, uh, Canada. She shares it cause she prepares Sunday school lessons with all the different, I love that one. That yeah. one. Living Scriptures is doing it good. Link in the show notes if you want to uh, get a free month. You can check it out. Do it. It's worth it. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, You always know that your kids have been searching the wrong videos, uh, you know, the wrong spooky things when they come up and whisper in your ear and they're like, do you want to play? And you're like, what have you been watching on YouTube? Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. So. Well, good. Oh, All right, back to the news. Good. good. Okay. I, think that, I, think that, I think that that's important. Uh, that's important to uh, to note, though, because that definitely is, you know, significant and, and an issue for a lot. I I don't have any kids yeah. in my house, so I'm able to stream or you know not stream the things that I would like. But I mean, I think that that is 
maybe a little bit of a blind spot for me where I'm like, why is this? Oh, it is. It's this issue for these folks. Uh, I want to talk about this. There is a ton, 20 uh, chapels in the Salt Lake Valley broken into yes. multiple cities, yes. over a hundred thousand dollars of things stolen. So it's, this isn't like your smash grab and, uh, oh. you know, uh, destroy things and be like, we hate the Mormons, blah, blah, you yeah. know, it's not that this is, Finding their way in, stealing stuff, uh, multiple pe- multiple multiple chapels, um, mostly in like the Harriman, kind of South Jordan, south part of the valley. Uh, they haven't been able technically to link them all together, though. You know, yeah. They're saying, listen, it all happened in sort of this time frame and could have very easily been. Um, at the recording of this, no suspects have been, you know. Uh, caught arrested uh charged any of those kind of things it's just okay. been like hey w- w- what's going on here why are people doing this now of all things and burgling mm-hmm. as opposed to the you know can of spray paint that says yeah yeah we'll check ksl.com and see you know how they have that ads on ksl mm-hmm. Sell stuff. all of a sudden there's all this church <laughs> artwork yeah eraser chalkboards there's a tv on a cart we're just yes, doing like yes. what i think is so awesome we don't have those anymore do you still have the tv on the cart in yes, your we do. Yeah. Yes, we do. yeah yeah i'll tell you what they i don't know what uh what my war did but we have two like 70 inch tvs mounted up on the wall of our sunday school room with yeah. the worst sound system ever being a person who works in audio stuff it's like yeah. <laughs> Uh, when you think about it, you think about more. Because you live in Utah, though, that's why. Like yeah. when you go to church in Utah, you're like, oh, you you guys have fancy stuff. Mm. Our church was our chapel was built in the 70s by church members, and so it's all wonky. Yeah, the AC is on in the chapel, the heat is on in the primary room. <laughs> We're like, I'm like, can we. Could somebody come fix? Can we just do a tear down and a new build? But it's oh. I think it's because we're so far from from Zion. We're so far from Utah. You, well, you're out in the mission field, of course. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> that's what I'd love for them to do. Do like a get a committee, do a worldwide audit of church buildings to mm. make sure that like we don't have some people attending in the nice new churches, the nice palaces, and then other people are, you know, kind of kind of do a little more equality on well, but undoubtedly though you're gonna have i mean the building i i i go to it was uh literally part of it was funded by my grandparents who lived in this neighborhood yeah. the oh, yeah. building is 70 80 years old there's mm-hmm. pictures of my young grandparents you know being there at the site and you know people would actually like would do some of the work on the building themselves yeah and, and so i mean it it's not it is not the downtown Salt Lake part of the high rise chapel yeah. that, you know, that we see some of the things, but, but True. I, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. And I, so the branch president who built, who made this building happen, it's a funny story. He decided there needed to be a building in San Marcos in our little city. And he didn't really understand the protocol. So he just like drove to Salt Lake City and showed up at the church office building was like, I'd like to build a chapel. Can I get permission for it? Like, I don't know if he thought he was going to get a paper that says you can do it. But they did some like, you know, raise X amount of money. And then, you know, you've got to go through the stake president. You got to go through uh, through this authority in the 70s. And so he came back and they did. They raised the money. They got the funding and they did the work on it. And I think it's very endearing the story mm. and he passed away a few years ago and i just feel like we just need a nice church to go to like i understand mm. the heritage of it maybe sure. we can save a brick or two or you know a, a nice beam but like when people come to our church especially being in the south when you have churches with a ton of money mm-hmm incredibly nice buildings and you're like welcome to our gym there is carpet on both the floor and the walls <laughs> and, you know what i mean yeah. so I'm like wow oh, you guys come to church here really yeah really? yeah interesting i always there's a hallway in our our particular building where there's no pictures and it's a very long hallway literally every time i see the stake president i'm like if i buy it can i put it up in this hallway yeah. I'll, buy, I'll even buy one of the ones 
that are supposed to be in chapels, right? I don't necessarily think that we should only have 20 pieces of art that we can pick from for for yeah, church yeah. houses, but still, even with one of those, I'll I'll pick one of those and yeah. pay for it. We'll do a little tithing kind of thing, something in this hallway. Uh, interesting. Well, these people stealing stuff, they thought the other way, Richie. They were like, take it all away. Yeah. None yes, of this stuff for the church. Well, so. So, and still no one has been caught. But then we go to Colorado, and there were obviously some bored teenagers who uh, they decided that they would vandalize the church there. It's in a place called Bertaud. Bertaud? Yeah. I don't know. It's in Colorado. Uh but I, have... I don't think I can do better on that pronunciation. You got it. Thank you. Nailed it. I have to bring this up because even though it's graffiti at a church, I uh, it it made me laugh. Now I know what you're talking about because it made now, me laugh too. So go. Because it's in red. It's red spray paint. And uh, the uh, thing, you know, sometimes people will say different things about Joseph Smith or about the way mm -hmm. we treat LGBTQ people, et cetera, whatever, right? This graffiti says, I hate Mormon. And then there's a heart next to it. Wow. Uh, yeah. I, th I thought that was funny too. And it says Mormon, right? It doesn't yeah. say Mormon. Yeah. Not Mormons. I Mormon. feel like maybe there's a Lamanite, you know, like how Outlander, she went through the stones. I think maybe a Lamanite came through the stones. Yes. <laughs> that, that, that is a hundred percent what it is. A well, no, yeah. actually what it is is I'm traveling uh, Lamanite. a Lamanite came through a cave up in what was yes. it in Wyoming is that yes. where tennis shoes among the Nephites is found uh -huh. its way into the cave and then came and said I hate Mormon I gotta <laughs> tell somebody how I feel and then he was like well maybe he's nice now I'll just draw a heart uh, yeah that, that's the repentance process yeah they, full of hatred vitriol at the beginning of tagging and then we're like yep. love you Love you. Yeah. So I no, it's a yeah. The whole what they did, it was I feel like maybe somebody was intoxicated, whether it be by mushrooms <laughs> or something else, but none of it makes any super slay. They also wrote the word slay. Yeah. So yeah. You know, and just, and gay like, Mormon what? gay Mormons with a Z. With a Z, Not, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, Anyone with information about this incident is asked to uh, go to stopcriminals.org or call 80, or I'm sorry, 970-221-6868. Uh, I did appreciate this, though. The um, police said defacing sacred spaces is a heinous act. It does feel an extra level of disrespectful. Yeah. It's a place where deeply meaningful, uh, it's a place that is deeply meaningful for people in our community and violating the sanctity of any spiritual home is unacceptable. I tend to agree with that yeah the sheriff did a good thing i think i think he really made it you know this is why it matters so now, now i want to ask you um you you've got the kids but i also know uh you've got um you've got the husband that you guys probably talk about a lot of things in the current news right him your husband russ who also is a, a panelist here in the cultural hall we we get together and do news sometime mm -hmm. um have you talked to and or followed any of the stuff with uh, Tim Ballard? Yes. And yeah. and do you talk to your kids about it? Because they're aware of like, you know, that, that this is going on or is it just kind of you and oh. your husband talk about it? So my kids don't know. They don't know who Tim Ballard is. They mm -hmm. don't know who he is. And in fact, when we just came back from the trip that we just went on, my daughter came back from the airport bathroom and said, mom, what's human trafficking mm. so I was like oh it's where you sell people for working or for pleasure I was trying mm. to be a little bit broad and they don't have a choice to do it and they you know it's not something they want to do and oftentimes it's under duress or manipulation that they're put in that situation and she said well why is that an airport and I explained well this is where you transport goods and materials mm -hmm. human um there's a, I will say this too. So this is, I guess, only for our patron saints. If you ever see somebody, they wave at you and they do this, this mm -hmm. is, it's, it's an open hand. The thumb comes in, the four fingers close down over the thumb. This is a universal sign that the person is in an abusive, either physical or trafficking 
situation and they need to get away from the person they're with. Interesting. The way that they can say to other people, I need help. I need to get away without verbally saying it and then triggering the person they're with. So if they wave and then they do that and you think that's weird, it's they're trying to tell you, help me get out of this. Wow. So the time when people see that and they know what it means, you just scoop that human and you run. You know what I mean? Like you just get that baby and you go. Yeah. Or sometimes they'll have somebody else distract the other party and ask them mm-hmm. a question so somebody else can take them away. So anyways, it's a big, so I don't talk about it with my kids aside from that. Um, Talk about it with my husband for sure about uh, Tim Ballard. And um, my I have a friend who worked with another organization out of Utah where she's been indicted on a felon, a bunch of felonies. Yeah. It's, it's called her Exodus. Name. Exodus. I can't yeah. think of her name, but yes. it's Exit Us. Exit, I think it's under slavery yeah. is what it maybe stands for or something like that. Um, and so, yeah, I have my best friend, Victoria Stevens, had done some social mar- media marketing volunteer. I think it was volunteer. Or maybe she worked with her and was very shocked by that. So I'm, I'm hearing a lot from Victoria about like, you know, just kind of this world being just kind of spun back around on itself. Well, and in that particular scenario, which that woman, I tried to figure out if she um, was a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and near as I can tell was not. Um, sort of evangelical or, um, you know, sort of one of like these people's churches, right? Where it's sort of everyone and we're not anything, yeah, yeah, yeah. but we love yeah. the community. I think a member of that, but that woman um, took funds from that organization and used it to prop up her life, right? Like, oh, I'm just yes. going on a trip. Yep, buying my kid a car. Yeah, yeah. Into the hundreds of thousands of dollars that she took from that particular organization. And a lot of people, you know, like my friend who I think she did work for her, you know, for voluntarily saying like, oh, I want your mission to succeed. I normally charge for this. I'll just help you. And then sure. feel like, wait, you, you can't pay me, but you can buy your son a car. And yeah. anyway. Yeah, I think I think that that's particularly hard because still, and you probably feel this too. So you're like, listen, I, I, but I don't, I don't think that trafficking is a great idea and I would like it to stop and I'd like to be able to feel empowered to be able to do something but here I go to this organization where I wanted to lead this a little bit is we haven't talked too much about the the medium that Operation Underground Railroad yes, used psychic. to talk to dead Mormon leaders Nephi. to find where the kids yeah Mephi's and Lehi's and mm-hmm. uh you, but you feel like you want to do something about it because human trafficking is the worst. But you have that story with the woman embezzling. You have this story wherever this ends up landing with Timothy Ballard. Um, like I, I, I just, uh, I think I, I want a voice that I think it sucks that you can't just be like, here's a great organization. I yes. know that this money is doing the thing that it can do. And there are, that's what's so important, I think, when, especially as members of the church, because we donate to the church and we want to know that that is going to proper places. But when mm-hmm. we go above and beyond and go to somewhere else, like you want to know that that organization is treating your money right, is doing the thing that it says it's going mm-hmm. to do, is going to achieve, achieve the thing. I digress about that. Talking to, uh, <laughs> talking to dead Mormon leaders, I just, there's, But I will say this happens in law enforcement. Sometimes they do this as a last attempt to solve a case. I've I've seen it. um, I've read about it happening in other cases where they're just kind of so desperate that they say, we'll throw some money at this option again. But Tim Ballard, former CIA or FBI, whatever he is, somebody with his level of experience, I don't think you should be to that point. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like those are, what I'm talking about is very specific cases where there's a missing body or a missing person. And they're like, man, we don't know where this dead person's at. Let's see if they can find something and maybe we can find them. And it doesn't really help in all reality, but it's more just like the desperate attempt of. Sure. We tried. I think it really is the, we tried everything we possibly. Yep. And so, but having it be part of your operating, it it shouldn't be that way. Yeah, so. commonplace in the operations. I think it, it's such a bizarre thing to me. Uh, yeah, and certainly know that it goes on, you know, in other cases. But 
But but what has baffled me is that like the people that are still like stalwart Tim Ballard, like I'm on the bandwagon, let's do it. Yes. So you have all the allegations of like sexual, uh, you know, misconduct, right? Sexual harassment. Uh, these, yes. these things of like, well, pretend you're my wife, because what if they see, right? All of those things, true or not true, allegations have been, I think there's seven counts or seven allegations from five different people, as I understand it. Um, and, and then you hear that it's like, yeah, we're going to chuck thousands of your dollars that donated at, at this person. And this is how we routinely try and find these people. Like, it it is a thing that most that makes me most anxious about um people in general and i see this in the political sphere and i see this with this individual and i see it at and quite frankly it's a thing that sometimes scares me about the church in general where mm-hmm. people where you'll be like here is a thing are you not even going to recognize that this is a, a thing that has occurred or that has been said about mm-hmm you know, about whatever, like the, the inability to be able to look at something and go, Oh, what if that is true? What, yeah. if, you know, what if, you know, you, you hear it a lot where people are like, I would never leave the church ever. I'm never going to leave the church. And that, that to me, like, I appreciate the devotion towards the church, but that, mm-hmm. that kind of thing to me for any institution group person or person scares me because yeah. I, I go, but what if yeah churches is, is you know doing this particularly horrible thing that is wrong for some reason i don't know what that would be or how that kind of works yeah. you would never but everybody has a limit yeah 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 I, well i've got two maybe three things i want to just comment on in the please. article um it so it kind of the attention in the article kind of turns over to um, the attorney general of Utah, uh, Reyes. Yeah. And, Sean Reyes. Reyes. And I like this part where he said that Ballard should have the presumption of innocence and the women should have a presumption of credibility. You need to be able to logically hold both of those in your mind at the same time. Yeah. Like we're, we're adults. We should be able to, there is a dissonance there. You're, you're innocent and you're telling the truth. Do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But you, at this point in the game, you've got to be able to hold those two in the balance. And then whenever something like this happens, right, you have somebody who seems to be carrying the banner. And this sort of relates over to the Ruby Frank Mm -hmm. story. too. They seem to be carrying the banner for some moral high ground. And then there's this fall from grace or from the moral high ground, whatever. I always think of this quote, and it's from Nietzsche. Nietzsche? Yeah, Mm -hmm. I used to say that. But it says, he who fights monsters should look to it that he does not become a monster. When you gaze long into the abyss, the abyss also gazes into you. Mm. And so I I love that quote because I think you've got to check yourself. And we see this with officers, police officers, 90% of their interactions with the public. Oh, are- yeah. And so what happens? They end up being the ones who are using excessive force and violence. So you need to have those checks because I think like that says, when you gaze long into the abyss, human trafficking, superior child rearing, you know, dealing with criminals, the abyss gazes long into you and you end up falling from that moral high ground. You got to have a check on yourself. You got to be humble and know, you know, yeah, you, you very well could become the monster you claim to be fighting. Yeah. And you quote Nietzsche, I quote uh, Brother Cube, who says, check yourself before you wreck yourself. Wreck yourself. <laughs> yeah, that's a, be- that's a catchier way to put it. But I like that idea of the abyss and the monsters. You yeah, know? that's very powerful. I appreciate that. Uh, and, and then uh, other and most recent uh, yesterday, as of the this recording of it, um, a statement made uh, by Tim Ballard. Uh, uh, Tim Ballard's wife, who has said, you know what, I'm sticking by his side. And mm-hmm. we are, we are working with church leaders and staying in constant communication with that. And we we'll asked about um, whether or not Tim was excommunicated, because there has been a lot on Reddit and some of the 
kind yeah. of other things. People saying he's not listed as the head of household on the gospel app anymore in his ward and and some of those things. I think likely he was excommunicated. It sounds it, it's credible enough that it, mm -hmm. it that that probably is a thing. And and when you know when someone says, listen, we don't want to confirm or deny it, but it's also our business and we're dealing with it. That tends to me to go, okay, something has gone on. Um, yeah. I, uh, yeah, it, it strikes an interesting chord with me personally, having also been excommunicated where I look at, uh, and it's not fair of me to do this, but I'm like, okay, so Tim Ballard and I are the same, right? What I did yeah. is the same level of what Tim Ballard did in order to get excommunicated. That's a tangent for another time, but, um, well, and I will say, and I think it's cause I'm old. But yeah. I've had a lot of, I've known a lot of good Christ loving, following people that have been excommunicated. So I sort of don't care about it anymore. I don't yeah. know if that's right. Like, I'm kind of like, it's between you and God and yeah. not me. And it's not contagious. Like yeah. <laughs> I taught Relief Society a few weeks ago and it had come up and I was like, well, first of all, it's not contagious. Right. So just, that's a great still thing. Need, you still need to be kind to people. Yep. Yeah. But I just think of like Sam Young, my friends that I know. Sam Young, by the way, previous guest of the Culture Hall. You can find the link for his episode in the show notes. He's the one uh, about what five, six, seven years ago really pushed yeah. for uh, a, a a bunch of different changes uh, in how we interact with bishops. Yeah, yep. how bishops speak to young women about sex and shaming them for having sexual desires. Yeah, he yeah. Did a lot of and, and a lot of those things changed. Yes. After he was excommunicated. That, yes. that is a fascinating thing. I may reach out to Sam and see what he thinks about uh, the changes, maybe have him back in, but you should check out that episode. Yeah. But a lot of good people. So for me, it means if somebody says to me, I've been excommunicated from the church, I'm like, well, you want to come over for dinner? What do you want to do? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. That doesn't really change things for me. I'm I, I'm not going to catch it. And there's been, actually, I had a, a bishop who threatened me with it a few years ago. Yeah, that's um, fun. And yeah, he did not like what I was sharing on Facebook. I was encouraging people to go to a Zoom sacrament meeting during COVID. And he thought that was not okay. They were, he was in control and I shouldn't be inviting people to do a Zoom sacrament meeting for another ward that was not mine. Hmm. I said, well, I'm going to do what I want. You don't have to do it. And he said, well, I think you might need to schedule a meeting so we can talk about your membership and how you listen to Ooh. your preachers. I was like, <laughs> What? Yeah. Anyways, that's a, that's an aside, but you know, I just, I, I don't, I look at that now and I think that's between them and God and there's good people who love Jesus that have been excommunicated. It doesn't mean they don't love Jesus. Well, and I don't I, have to make a comment on what it means. Yeah. It's just, well, it's and the, and the other, and the other side of it too, that I think is, is worth noting uh, to that point. I mean, I'm no sort of Tim Ballard lover. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think that good people can, as you talk about, they they stare into the abyss and then they become the monster. Right. Like I genuinely believe if all of that is being said is true, I genuinely believe that at the beginning he was like, this is such an atrocity. I'm on board. Let's fix it. And I just think that because, you know, if you don't have enough checks within yourself or with other people, you can mm -hmm. very quickly and very easily become something that that you you weren't when you started the whole thing and and i will say too you you can't let the downfall sweep away the good yeah you know what i mean there are still victims who were trafficked that he did help i have no doubt about it i don't think that this was like a sham from the start sure nobody, nobody was ever saved there were people that were saved from a lifetime of sexual servitude because of efforts he made at least in the beginning yeah and so there is good that comes out of it. And I, I think sometimes I have a friend who was a, a youth leader that got excommunicated and I hate it because people won't talk about the good mm. that they did as a youth leader because of the excommunication. Mm. And I hate it because I think you really have to acknowledge that, you know, hundreds of youth that were encouraged by them. And who made choices that led them to serve a mission, that led them to be worthy to go to the temple, even though later on in life, 
things happened that led to excommunication. Do you know what I mean? I just, oh. I think that all of a sudden we just sweep out the bad, all the good, and there's only the bad. We still have to say, yes, this is, this is not great, or yeah, that's going on now, but look at all of the good that has been done. Let's, let's be thankful and, and still remember the good. And to put a button on it uh, from a very personal perspective, it's hard as an individual who was excommunicated to sort of shed that, okay, well, God didn't want me for a while, and now mm -hmm. he does, right? And I think yeah. we do a better job of that about that now. But certainly when I was excommunicated now 20-some uh, years ago, it was very much like, oh, I, I'm, I'm different. I'm bad. I'm not wanted. And, it, yeah. and it's taken, I, I don't know that I have completely shed all of that, um, but it certainly took a good long time for me to be like, okay, I am a good person who did things that yeah. were in, incorrect, wrong, shouldn't have done, um, sinful, whatever. But at the end of the day, I am still a good person who did those kind of things. And that's that's a whole oh. different component of that that yeah. we can talk about. And I've been thinking about, this a lot lately more generally but i think that this is why satan is called the great deceiver mm. because that shame cloud that hangs over your head yeah i really i don't want to say i gained a testimony but i really <laughs> think that is the huge deception that we have within ourselves in knowing what our worth is mm -hmm. that we put on others in saying they don't have worth mm. it's a great deception by him to make it so we don't see you and I are children of God. We are both human and we are both loving Jesus and doing the best we can. Yeah. You know, and so we put labels on, well, you get to see in, uh, in the gospel and we don't really need you. We don't really want you around anymore. You know, yeah. Yeah. You, that's not what it is. Everybody should be welcome. Everybody should know that this is where they belong. So, all yeah. right. Off that soapbox. There we go. And that's the uh, that's the news that we did this week. We got to what? Four stories? Do, Good for yeah, us. Yeah, we were going to do so much, but we just like to talk. So mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, it strikes me as we visited, and you probably know this already, but it's worth because it's it sort of struck my brain a couple of times. How cool is it that your daughter will come to you and ask things that like, what's human trafficking? And I want to talk to you about the protesters and stuff like that. I... Yeah. um. I think that that's significant and and a thing that I don't know that I asked, not because like my parents were bad parents or anything like that. I just, I don't know that I went to them to ask things, but have appreciated the heck out of being able to do that as an adult where almost like that, like, hey, um, it, it, you know, it says be good to your spouse in the bathroom. Dad, how have you been good to your spouse? Like I'll do those kind of conversations now as an adult. So I just thought that was pretty significant to point out that you're like, yeah, I'm going to take the time to explain this to you at the level that you're at. Props to you is, I guess, what I'm trying to say. Well, I hope she always does it, you know, because I can tell her or somebody else out there will, you yeah. know, she's going to, she's going to find out. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, well, I think we wrap it up and know that you have the freedom to wrap this however you would like, but I hope that this episode has nourished and strengthened your body. And that fall finally comes to Texas. Did the, Do your kids pray for that? Yes, that's what we're <laughs> praying for right now. We're sick of the heat. We're sick of it. So. And that when the time comes, you'll be able to travel home in safety. In the meantime... meantime. We will. We'll I was trying to sync up with you. No, you. We don't sync up this part. We go. In the meantime, oh. we'll be saving a seat for you. Then you say, "On the back row." And then we say, "Of, of the, the cultural, cultural hall. hall." That's the worst one ever. No, that was pretty good, actually. Oh, it was? That sounded good on my end. Yeah, it sounded very long, but you got it. Enjoy it. Sorry, or give us the hate on Facebook in the back row. Sorry, Valine.